If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, Ivan the biker may finally escape from the science facility. Before Half-Life 1 was released into the public, there was a lot of effort to make it a masterpiece. Before the timeless maps and the story of the game that came into being, there were empty halls and unfinished maps. Let's take a look at the Half-Life Alpha. To get started, let's see how the Alpha was released into the public. On December 31st, 2012, a Reddit user by the name of Jackal Jazer showed a photo of the CD that contained the version 0.52 Alpha build of the game. It was dated September 8th, 1997. Of course, the whole community went absolute wild, asked the user, Jackal, to share the contents of the CD. Jackal, a few weeks later, on January 8th, 2013, shared the files with the rest of the community. This CD was actually intended for journalists and playtesters of the game. Inside the CD, there was the build itself of course, but there was also a few other things. Some marketing materials, some documents, and some video files. All of these things, along with the cut enemies featured in the build, we'll look into in a follow-up video. But for now, in this video, let's just go over the maps. There are six chapters, alpha chapters, included in this build. As you can see on screen, there is the portal device, which was later renamed to Unforeseen Consequences. The Office Warrens became Office Complex. The Security Complex became We've Got Hostiles. Alien Research Lab became Questionable Ethics. Communication Center became Forget About Freeman. And finally, Reactor Lab became Lambda Core. This video will showcase all of these maps in sequence. I used the pre-existing demo files within the build to get the footage because personally I couldn't navigate around the maps. They were a bit like mazes and it was getting difficult to figure out where to go. But that was expected because, you know, it's an unfinished game with unpolished maps. The first map starts from the portal device. This device was the predecessor to the anti-mass spectrometer that causes the disaster in the retail game. In the storyline document that is in the CD, which was written by Mark Laidlaw by the way, tells an almost similar story to the retail game. Well, it's basically the same story. Experiment goes wrong, aliens start pouring into our world and chaos ensues. But the difference was that there wasn't any element of world building. There wasn't no Black Mesa or Sector C labs or whatever is memorable from Half-Life 1. It just didn't exist at this point. The maps which would become Sector C labs and the other laboratories in retail look minuscule and very tightened up. There aren't a lot of places to go in here. Of course the Alpha doesn't have a story in itself, it's just a map pack of sorts. There aren't any dialogues and there aren't any music tracks. The maps themselves are pretty primitive and I was surprised a bit because there came some sections where I instantly recognized from the retail game. Some props like doors and ladders, I noticed that their proportions were a bit wide. It's probably because these were earlier designs and they were meant to look that way and they must have changed it later. The flashlight wasn't a flashlight at this point. Hitting the flashlight button would make you, in a way, glow and light up the surroundings. The office complex chapters, called office warrants here, look very similar in structure. Some places even being the same as retail just feel empty. But again, being an alpha build, I wasn't expecting anything either. Now something I'd like to point out is the technology used in Half-Life. The engine we know as Gold Source is actually a heavily modified version of Quake 1's engine, 8-Tech. 
what the team at Valve did was make it tech even better. The engine allowed better high resolution textures, advanced lighting, well, at the time it was advanced, and much more. We'll go over those advancements in detail in the follow-up video. At E3 97, Valve did show off the animation system and the AI of the game. It received a lot of praise, but later on, the team would realize that the game needs significant revisions to make it better and have a chance to compete with the upcoming Quake 2. There isn't a detailed list of what was changed during this revision, but I'm pretty sure that around this time, Ivan the Space Biker, the original protagonist, was discarded, and he was replaced with the hero we all know, Gordon Freeman. We've got Hostiles, or the security complex as it's called here, look very different. There was this huge machine in the middle of this room with some sort of puzzle, but whoever's playing the demo solved it on the first try. And I sort of get why Valve wanted to revise the game after E3 97. The maps, specifically how they are laid out, is kind of strange. Or well, like I said before, primitive. These narrow corridors you see, they make it look all the same. The textures are different, but you're going through the same type of transitional place. These transitions between maps matter. If all of them are going to start and end with corridors, it gets a bit boring to look at. Questionable Ethics, or Alien Research Lab in the Alpha, was the only somewhat unique map. The geometry in the map was varied, giving you twists and turns even started up with an open area, but the problem persisted. I don't know if it's just me, but each map I went through in this build, I could feel as if I'm playing the same map again and again, just with minor differences. The only thing that made them special were a few unique rooms that consisted of some unique props or models that gave a little bit of personality to the area. Forget about Freeman or Communications Center as it's called in the Alpha was nice and wide. It had different props in it to make it look like a comm center. Lambda Core or Reactor Lab was actually resembling to the retail version, although a bit uh, simpler and plain. I could recognize these places. In here, the models were missing I guess, but this is the place where Gordon would jump into the portal and travel to Zen. To finish this off, criticizing an alpha build of a game is honestly stupid in itself. It was never released to the public back then and we were never meant to play this. So criticism here is uh, non-applicable. All in all, it was interesting to look at this piece of history. It's the previous incarnation of a game we all know and love. Like the Half-Life 2 beta, it's interesting to see how the game was being developed. So this was just a quick look at the maps that are included in Half-Life 1's alpha build. There is more to look at in this build, but like I said in the beginning, we'll be going over that in a follow-up video. I just wanted to get the maps out of the way first, just so we can get ourselves familiar with the alpha build. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.